In this episode of the Epic CM Educational Series, we're going to be taking a closer look at how technical and fundamental analysis can do a better job together evaluating the strength of an underlying trend and trading opportunities within the trend. Now, when we talk about fundamentals, we, there's a lot of factors that could be accounted for. I'd suggest that they fall into basically one of three primary categories. One would be interest rates, and here what we're really talking about is the interplay between rising interest rates or falling interest rates or the expectation of rising or falling interest rates. So let me give you an example. If we were to consider after the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009, the Fed eventually began to signal to the market that they were going to begin tapering, uh, hence the taper tantrum, and investors began to expect that interest rates were going to go up relative to the dollar. Therefore, theoretically or classically, we would expect that the dollar would gain in value versus other currencies that the expectation for higher interest rates were not as profound. In fact, let's look at a chart here of the euro to the U.S. dollar during that period of time. So as you can see here, by July of 2014, it had been about a year since the so-called taper tantrum when the Federal Reserve first began threatening to taper off its bond buying program. And in July of 2014, they actually did start to taper that program off. And the euro to the US dollar, it broke short-term support at about $1.35 to the euro and began to decline from there. So the trend was quite profound and very fast moving to the downside, giving investors an opportunity to take advantage of downside trades in a trend that was looking very reliable and strong. Now, when we're talking about economic growth, obviously a fast growing economy is oftentimes correlated with higher interest rates and higher levels of inflation. Uh, those can also affect a currency. Obviously, there's some overlap there with the first factor here of interest rates. But quite often economic growth, the reason why we're concerned about it is its effect on commodity currencies, so those economies that are exporting commodities, or economies that may not be producing commodities but are importing commodities. So let's look at an example here. So we would assume that if economic growth is very strong, or if economic growth is very weak, that commodities would be rising in value or falling in value respectively. And in fact, if that rising and falling is strong enough, well, we would expect that to dominate the trend of a commodity currency, let's say, relative to a non-commodity currency. So here's an example where when the commodity prices and particularly energy prices began to fall quite dramatically in 2014, although the Japanese economy was historically relatively weak, the decline in commodities because of flat economic growth globally and, of course, an overproduction of commodities in general was a much more significant impact on the Canadian dollar. Therefore, we would have expected that to dominate and therefore the trend between these two to be in favor of the Japanese yen. So let's take a look at a chart that actually illustrates exactly what we're looking at here in between the fundamental factors and how it affected this particular pair. So as you can see in this chart here, for example, during that period of time, the trend was extremely strong. Now, this one was also a bearish example where the currency pair was trending off because the Canadian dollar, or the weakness in the Canadian dollar from an economic growth perspective, as oil prices were declining so fast, was much more profound than even just the lack of growth or the stagnation in the Japanese economy. Now, when we say safe haven, we're usually referring to the behavior of investors when we have some kind of geopolitical risk. So this could certainly include things like war or civil unrest. So for example, during the early days of the Greek crisis, investors were really concerned that a lot of money, capital flow, was moving from the Eurozone into the Swiss franc. So the Swiss franc is considered one of the classic safe haven currencies out there where if we do have some kind of profound and rare geopolitical event going on, then we would expect that fundamental factor to be in favor of the Swiss franc. In fact, let's take a look at a chart of the euro to the franc during that period of time and see how it actually did affect the trend between these two currencies. Now, as you can see, as the riots were continuing and there were problems in Greece, everyone was really worried about the so-called Grexit or perhaps a, a departure of Greece from the European Union and what that might mean. Well, the Swiss franc was gaining in value against the euro. So as a hedge against some of that uncertainty, and you can see that show up in the trend here. So during that period of time, we saw a very strong trend in favor. So once again, a bit of a bearish trend here in favor of the Swiss franc as investors sought a safe haven during that period of uncertainty. This would be very valuable information even for technicians who are looking to be able to time their trades in favor of the strongest trend. Is it up or is it down? And in this case, 
it was very obvious that it was negative and we could explain why that was. So there was a lot of uncertainty that was driving that safe haven buying and therefore creating a very strong trend to the downside in this pair. When we're doing fundamental analysis like this, what we're really trying to do is to understand the inherent risk in the current trend. So for example, one way for us to think about this is that if the fundamentals agree with the underlying trend of the currency pair that we're trading, then we would expect that there is less risk in a trade associated with that trend. Now, as you might imagine, therefore, if we are seeing a situation where they disagree, so the fundamentals do not agree with the underlying trend, then we would expect that there's a lot more risk. Now, obviously, it's gonna be very rare that we're in a situation where it's all or nothing. We're usually somewhere in the middle here. And this is a model that will help us to understand, well, how close am I to a low risk environment versus a high risk environment? In fact, let's take a look at a couple of examples of a situation where we had the fundamentals agree versus the time that we had the fundamentals disagree with the underlying trend of the currency pair. During the period pictured here for the dollar to the Japanese yen, the underlying fundamentals for the Japanese economy were relatively weak compared to the US dollar, and yet the trend was still in favor of the Japanese yen. So this was a good example where the fundamentals did not agree with where the trend was going. Therefore, there was a greater risk, the price shocks and intervention, which you can see here. This second chart is a good example of a period of time when the fundamentals agreed with the underlying trend of the currency pair. So in this circumstance, the commodity prices were falling, and of course that is a negative for the Australian dollar relative to the US dollar. Therefore, we would expect that this trend should also be falling. And in fact, it was. So this gives an advantage to investors who are looking for a short position, one in which they're in favor of the US dollar getting stronger or the Australian dollar getting weaker, and technical signals to the downside are more likely to have a successful outcome. When we combine technical analysis with fundamental analysis, we can do a much better job of understanding the underlying risk and stability of the ongoing trend and individual trading opportunities within that trend.